Hey there, welcome to another episode of Code with Gigi. In this episode, I'm going to teach you how to make beautiful buttons with a reusable button component that you can use in your React Native project. Feel free to add your own touch and styling to these. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is create a new React Native project. And I'm going to run npx react native in it. And then the project name, I'm going to call this a uh, button episode. Okay, now that that's done, I'm going to cd into my project directory and then I'm going to install uh, React Native Vector Icons. So npmi dash dash save React Native Vector Icons. All right, now that that's done, I'm going to CD into iOS and I'm going to run pod install. All right, I'm going to go ahead and open the file browser to my project directory and in this directory mine is called button episode i'm going to go into ios i'm going to right click on this file here with the extension xc workspace and then i'm going to open this with xcode so once that's open i'm going to go ahead and open my um, project and file browser to the project root, node modules, and then I'm going to look for React Native Vector Icons. And where is that? There it is. I'm going to expand it and then find this directory called Fonts. And we're going to drag and drop that into our project directory in Xcode. And then make sure here you select create groups and button episode or whatever your project name is and then finish. Okay, now that that's done, I'm going to go into the targets and then build phases. And then I believe in here it's in the copy bundle resources. You should see the fonts added here. So let's go ahead and expand this. And there we go. Our fonts are copied here. We've added the fonts. There's one more thing we need to do. We need to update our info.plist file, which is in our project directory here. So not, not this, uh, where is it? Right here, button episode. I'm going to go ahead and expand that. And then select the info to open the info.plist. And then here on any of these rows, it doesn't matter which one, let's click on this plus icon. All right, so I need to search for font, fonts. Uh, maybe this should auto complete. I think it's uppercase fonts. Let's try that. All right, fonts provided by application. That's the one. So go ahead and enter. 
and then we're going to add a font here and to see what's available you can just expand that fonts directory that we dragged and dropped in here and you should see all the fonts for now i'm only going to add one of these i'm going to add material icons but feel free to add as many as you need to but for this demo i'm only using these icons all right, and now we are done setting up Xcode or our iOS. Uh, one last thing we need to do is we need to configure um, Android for this as well. All right, so to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and CD up one to my project directory. I'm gonna open this in VS Code In the Android app, there should be a file called build.gradle. And I'm just going to paste a line of code here. I'll make this available in the description of the video. And that's all we need to do for Android. So we're done with that. Let's go ahead and run our app. So to do that, I'm going to run npx, react native, start, that's within the terminal, of course. And then that starts the metro. And then I'm going to open a new tab and run npx, react native, run iOS. And to open a tab in terminal, it's just command T. Okay, now that we have our app running, what I'm going to do first, I'm going to clean up this app.tsx file and just remove all this uh, extra demo code that we're not going to be using. Instead, we're going to use this to display our buttons. So let's go ahead and clean all of this up. So I'm going to delete all of this here. Okay, now that I've cleaned that up, I'm just adding some basic style here to my app.tsx um, file. I'm just going to add a section title for the buttons here. And then I'm going to go ahead and center this. All right, there we go. So now I want to go ahead and add um, a container underneath this title where I'm going to be displaying the buttons. So for now, I'm just going to put a placeholder text. Just say buttons. And this is just where our component is going to be displayed here, or it'll be displayed multiple times here. All right, we're going to go ahead and create a new folder in our root directory called source. And then I'm going to create another folder called components. And that's going to be in the source directory. And the new file called my button .js. And this is going to be our button component that we're going to reuse. So very basic here. I'm just going to create a basic component that's going to return uh, some text for now. So let's just go ahead and import React. Oops. From React.
All right, so we're just returning some text. Really simple. Let's go ahead and import this into my app. I'm going to go ahead and enlarge this a little bit so you can see the code. All right, so let's import my button. And then let's just go ahead and display it in place of this text here. All right, so it's displaying here in our app. So now let's go through and see uh, what we can pass in here. The first thing I want to add is a property called title or label, sorry. We'll call this label. And this will basically be the label of the button. So instead of hard coding some text here, we're going to pass this in. That should definitely be passed in through the props. Uh, let's go ahead and spell that correctly here. All right. Uh, let's go back to our app and go ahead and set that or pass that prop in and set it to, uh, we'll just call this maybe a default button. All right, there we go. Let's get rid of this here. All right, there we go. Now we've got a default button displayed here in our container, but of course there's no style, doesn't even look like a button yet. So let's go ahead and add some things here so we can start um, making these buttons look like actual buttons. So I'm gonna add another button here and I'm gonna call it rounded. So back to our button component Let's think about other properties we can add here that we could pass in for our button. So let's color, set a color for the label. I'm going to default that to black here. And then in my uh, text for the button, I'm going to set that color to the property that's passed in called label color. And then in the app here, in that component, I'm going to pass a label color. Let's just for fun, we'll pass in green just to see. All right, there you go. We've got a green uh, label being displayed there. All right, so let's go ahead and add a background color to our button so it'll look like an actual button. Again, I'm going to default that to white. Uh, let's add some more properties here. Now I'm going to add the border color. And again, I'm going to default this to black for now. And we're going to go through and demonstrate how we can set these and customize these in a minute. Um, so before we go any further, let's pull up an image of the buttons we want to create. So here are the buttons. So let's see what other properties we would probably need to um, style these buttons. So our default button has a label, a border, and some background color, and it has some, it's rounded. So let's add, um, we've got background color and border color. I'm going to add a rounded property and this is going to be a Boolean. So I'm going to default this to true because our default button is rounded here. And you can default this to whatever you want to do for your own buttons. But for this demo, I'm going to default to rounded. All right, and then uh, we do need an on press handler, so you'll be passing in a function to handle the presses of the button. And then um, let's add a raised property. Again, this is going to be do a Boolean. And I'm going to default this one to false. That's basically for that shadow effect 
You see these buttons right here, they have kind of a raised with a shadow behind them. And then you've got these flat buttons here. So we'll use that to apply the shadows here like we have in these buttons. Let's also add the ability to add icons. You see these icons? We've got one that's before and then we've got one that's after the button label. So we'll just set a start icon for the one that's before the label and an end icon. And I'm not going to default these because if they're not passed in, then they won't be displayed. All right, so let's go and start adding some of these styles to our buttons. I'm going to add just one more property here and I'm going to call this uh, custom styles. That way if there's anything left that we couldn't, we forgot to apply here or that we can pass in as a specific prop explicitly, we can pass it through the custom styles. All right, so let's go ahead and start adding some styles to our button here. All right, so let's go ahead and create our styles variable here. And that's going to be set to style sheet dot create. Uh, let's go ahead and import the style sheet from React Native here. Oops, style sheet, not create. All right, well, the first thing I'm gonna style is the button itself. So let's go ahead and set a height for our button. I'm gonna set that to 50. And then I wanna set um, oops, width. And I'm gonna set this to 100%. So it'll be the 100% of whatever container, the parent container of the button is. And then let's go ahead and add a margin to the top. Just some kind of a default to give it some space between whatever um, comes before it. And then let's add a border radius, just a default radius here. I'm going to set this to 10 for now. And then we'll add a border width. I'm just going to set that to two and you guys can play around with these styles and kind of customize it to your own preferences as well. All right, so let's go ahead and apply the button style to the pressable uh, component here. All right, let's see how that looks in our app. All right, as you can see now, we've got a sort of a button looking component here with some text displayed in it. And um, now it at least looks like a button, but we still have some more things we need to add for this to look like what we want it to look like based on the image we just saw. So I'm gonna add a rounded style here and this is going to be set to a little bit higher radius than we have for the button up there. So this is going to be a border radius of, let's just set that to 30 for now. So basically, if we pass in a rounded um, property set equal to true, we're going to apply the styles dot rounded. But since we our default is true anyway, we don't need to check because that's going to be applied by default. So as you can see, my buttons are both rounded now. Now, if we pass it in and it's false, we're going to have to handle that here as well. So let's go ahead and check to see. So if that is set to true, then we're going to apply the style. If not, we're not going to apply that style. 
Okay, let's go ahead and save this. And since the defaults to true, they're both rounded because I'm not passing the property in. All right, now I'm gonna create a view container and wrap the button text in this container so that I can uh, display everything that's inside this container and center it and align it properly. So that would, that would include for us our button label. So we're gonna call this a button container. And let's go ahead and apply a flex direction to set to row. Um, and I'm doing this because I'll have a label and an icon and I want them to display on the same axis. I don't want them to be displayed uh, in a column. So I'm going to align the items to the center and also the um, justify content as well center. That way it's on the center of the button horizontal axis and on the vertical axis. All right, so let's go ahead and apply that style here to this container. So styles dot button container. All right, there we go. It is centered. However, it's at the top of the button and I think I know why. This is because of the height of this container needs to be the same height as the button and it's not right now. So we'll just set the height to be a uh, hundred percent. That's to its parent and the parent is the button, which is 50. So now we've got it right in the center of our button. Now this is coming along. This looks much better now already, but let's keep going and make this look like the picture that we saw earlier. All right, now let's apply some styles to our label. So right now it's all lowercase. Let's go ahead and create another style property here for our button um, text. And I'm just gonna add a font size to uh, 18. And let's go ahead and um, text transform. And I'm just gonna put capitalize for now. And I'm gonna do a font weight and set that to, uh, let's set it to 500. All right, let's go ahead and apply that new um, style property here to our label. So that was styles uh, dot button text. And we'll leave the label color here since that's being passed in as a property. All right, so we've got uh, the text applied here. We've got, um, let's look at our buttons. So here I have uh, uppercase. Let's go ahead and change it so it looks more like this. I think it looks a little bit better, but you can, again, you can customize this the way you like. There we go. I think that looks better. So we've got our two buttons. We've styled the text and um, the button itself a little. Now let's go and check our buttons and see if we can um, add some background color and how we would apply that here in our um, styles. So just like we did the rounded, let's check for the property background color. And if that is set, then we're gonna go ahead and apply that color that's being passed in. So we'll set the background, oops background color to whatever value is being passed in through the prop. Otherwise, we don't really need to set that. So let's do this. Let's um, so 
go ahead and actually set the default here to white. So if we're passing it in, we'll set it to whatever is being passed in. If it's not, so we won't set the default here since we're already setting it here in our conditional statement. There we go. And that should apply. All right, so let's go to one of our buttons and maybe apply a background color. Let's try to recreate this blue rounded button, the second one in that list. Let's go to our app.tsx and on the second one right here, let me change this label. I need to remove the label color and then I'm going to add a background color and I'm just going to paste this color in. And again, I will leave the link to this code in the description of the video and you guys can reuse it and customize it however you like. So I'm going to paste that blue color hex here. And I need to remove this comma here. That's why I'm getting the error. So let's remove that. All right, so I'm going to get rid of this border, the black border. Uh, to do that, so we've got border color defaulted to black. So I'm going to remove that. Just like we did our background color, I'm going to check and see if a border color was passed in to the props. And let's just change this to border. Oops, border color. And this should be border color, not background color. Okay, let's change this to border color as well. This should be border color. And same here. And then now here, I'm going to default the border to black. So if I don't pass it in, then it's going to be black. So that's not going to change yet. Just wanted to add the code to handle the border color in our component. All right, so let's go back to our app and pass in a border color with the same color as the background. That way it doesn't have this black border around it. So I'm just going to copy that same hex code. Oops, nope, try that again. All right, so there we go. Now we have our button looks just like our demo, no border. It's got the nice blue rounded flat button. All right, looks like my VS code is complaining here of some properties not being passed in. Uh, it's a TypeScript warning. So I'm just for this demo, I'm going to rename this to um, app.js because I'm not doing TypeScript here. There we go. Now the warnings are gone. If So if you see that, if you've got settings in your VS code, it'll complain. All right, so let's create this green raised button with a shadow. We got the first two, let's create another one. So I'm going to copy this button. Let's paste that. And this isn't a rounded button. So let me just change this to not rounded. This is just a label so you guys can see, of course, you're going to pass in whatever values you need for your actual buttons. All right, so let me go ahead and change this to um, pass the property rounded equals uh, false on this one. There we go. That looks good. Now let's change that color to the green color. All right, so if you can see, we've got that shadow here on this button. So we're going to need to add 
this effect or the style to our button component. And then we can set it through the props. So let's go ahead and add another style here in our styles. And I'm going to call this shadow for now. And let's go ahead and add a shadow color. I'm just going to set this to black and a shadow uh, offset. And we just need to set a width and a height on this. So I'm going to add a width of three and a height of four or two is good for now. Of course, you can play around with these values and see what looks good to you. And then I'm going to add a shadow opacity and I'm going to just set this to a one. Okay, now let's set a shadow radius. And I'm going to set that to three. And I'm going to set elevation. You don't need this for iOS, but you will need to set this for that um, raised effect or the shadow in uh, on Android. All right, now that this is set, let's go ahead and apply the shadow to our not rounded shadow button. All right, so let's go up here to our uh, pressable component. And just like we did for the border color and the background color, we're going to check to see if the raise property is set. If it is, then we're going to apply the styles.shadow. Okay, now we can see that the shadow was applied to this button. All right, great. So let's go back and look at this button here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and set that color. So let's go back to our button here in our app.js and I'm going to set the button color to the screen. I'm going to go ahead and paste that green color here. And there we go. Now we have the green button with the shadow. And I'm going to make the border the same color as well. All right, so we've got these three buttons. Let's go back and look at our buttons. Let's add a couple more buttons here. We probably won't go through all of these, but I do want to show you how to set the icons uh, before and after the label. And maybe we'll do the rounded one with the shadow. All right, so let's go through and create a couple more of these buttons. And then I highly encourage you guys to go and finish the ones that I didn't finish in this demo and try to see if you can uh, set those yourselves. And also play around with the style a little bit and the design and come up with something different. Would love to see what you guys come up with. If you can, share those with me in the comments. I would love to see the results. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and copy this again here. And let's go ahead and set some of these properties to maybe let's do this yellow one with the icon. So let's go ahead and change the label first. And I'll just call this end icon. And then the background color, I'm going to paste this yellow color here. I'm going to remove the border because I want the default black border. And I'm going to remove rounded so because that was set to false. I'm also going to remove the shadow. And now we have the button that looks just like the one in the uh, screenshot we have here. Let's go ahead and see how we would add an icon either to the end of the label or to the beginning of the label, before or after the label basically. So we're just going to call it start and end icon. 
Uh, so to do that, let me clean out this since this is not TypeScript. I'm going to go ahead and import icon from Material UI icons. I'm going to use that lock icon from Material. So let's go in here and say import icon from React Native vector icons and we're going to get the material icons. And you can use any icons, of course. All right, so I'm going to set the end icon and I'm just going to pass the icon component directly into this component because we can do this. And I'm going to pass the lock icon and I'm going to set the size just for now. I'm going to set it to 12. You can also set a color, whatever you want to pass in. However you want to style, this can be set right here. All right, so it's not displaying yet um, because we need to apply it in the component. Actually, I have a warning here. Let's see, what is this warning? Failed prop type. Invalid prop name. Okay, I see it's uh, the icon button. I misspelled that. That should be lock. So let me change that. All right, there we go. So the warning is gone. Now we need to go and add this icon to our button. So simply we are passing it in. So we've got end icon and start icon. It's going to be really easy. We're just going to add the end icon after the button label right here because we've already applied the styles to our button container. And there you have it. The icon is being displayed after the label. So, and then we'll put start icon to be displayed before. So if it is passed in, it would display it. It's not right now, but for demo purposes, let's just see how that would work. So we're going to go back to our app and I'm just going to copy, uh, let's see, let's copy this end icon and just pass in a start icon as well as the end icon. And there you go. You see two icons displayed now, but of course you probably aren't going to want to do this. So you might want an icon either before or after the label, but not both. So let's go ahead and delete this because we don't need it. And I'm going to change this uh, icon size to 18 because 12 looks a little bit too small to me. And of course, like I said, you can pass in a color, but this is the full component. So all the styling for your icon is going to go in here. We won't handle that in the button itself, but you can, that could be a challenge for you to add something like that to your component that level of flexibility. All right, so we've got these buttons. These look great. I think you guys should have some fun and try to see if you can recreate some of these. I am going to create one more in this tutorial, and that is just to see a rounded button with a shadow. And then I want to show the label color also. So let's create one more and we'll do the red rounded button. So let's go ahead and copy this. All right, so this button is the one we want. I'm going to grab this red hex color. Paste that in here. So we've set our background color, it's red, but as you can see, the black text on that color, it doesn't look very good. So we're gonna go ahead and set our label color and we'll just pass that in through our props here. And let's go back over here. You see we've got label color and it's default set to black, but we're gonna go ahead and pass in a white color. There we go. And now you see white. And then of course that icon, we can either get rid of it or I could change it to white. 
but just so we can see what that would look like let's go ahead and make that white there you go that looks better but for the stem I'm going to remove the icon because we don't really want that oh and then let's go ahead and change that border color as well to be the same as the red so it looks like the demo that we were looking at. Let's remove this and let's go and add our um, button label. We'll call it rounded raised. And we're gonna set the raised equal to true. And that way that style will be applied. Oops, that should be in braces. All right, now that we've demonstrated some of these buttons and I've shown you how to create a variety of these buttons, um, of course, there's also this on press handler, which we didn't demonstrate, but basically that'll be your function that would handle the on press event for your button. And then the custom styles, I would use this to pass in any leftover styles that we didn't handle but I encourage you guys to go ahead and play with this on your own. But let's go ahead and at least apply it if it is passed in. So we'll check to see if custom style is set, that property. And if it is, then we're just gonna spread those um, style properties here. If not, then we're not gonna do anything. All right, so now we're handling that and I'll let you guys again play around with that and see what kind of cool style custom styles you can come up with or change this any way that you like i would love to see your results again if you could share those in the comments that would be great all right and that wraps up this episode i hope you guys enjoyed this i hope that you found this useful and if you did please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and smash that like button also, don't forget to leave me a comment if you have any feedback for me. And you can definitely share your designs and how you use this component in the buttons. I would love to see those. All right, until next time, thank you for watching. See you in the next episode.